Hello everyone and welcome to a new video, MC Mora here and in today's video we are going to be talking about Yurian. Yurian is of course one of the strongest characters in Street Fighter V. I have a feeling honestly he has always been, but in this season he is certainly a top 5 character without question. And one of the reasons that Yurian is so good is because he almost does everything and we are going to do something that we never really done in this series before and that is just discuss Yurian from multiple angles and that's because Yurian is a type of character who is a bit of a jack of all trades he does a little bit of everything he have decent fireball zoning his unga bunga rushdown is off the charts and he also have one of the strongest comeback factors in the game so first of all let's just break down Yurian what can we abuse He's amazing at many things, but he does have a couple of holes here and there that you can abuse to your advantage. So to start with, one thing that you have to know about Yuria is that he doesn't have any fireball invincible moves, right? So what does this mean? This means that Yuria will not often have a very good time versus fireball characters. If he's playing a character that can zone him well with fireballs, Yurian typically used to have hard time. Now, with his V-Skill 2, it kinda improved this for him, because now he has a big fireball. But typically speaking, if you're just doing this against maybe Guile, against Nash, against, you know, any of the dedicated zoners, Yurian will typically lose this trades. Like, he will have a harder time getting through the fireball, he will maybe try to use his V-Skill to get through it, which might be a little bit hard for him. And this is a also this is also a really big thing. Because Yurian doesn't have a move to go through Fireball, he will have to engage in the Fireball War, right? And he will have to use his V-Skill to engage in the Fireball War. So because of that, this also leaves room for counterplay, because if Yurian is throwing Fireballs from here, like we said, Ryu is typically winning this. He will keep up for a bit, but eventually he will have to move, right? Well, he might then need to do his V-Skill, but this opens him up for jump-ins. So the very, first, the very first aspect of Yurian is, if your character is a Fireball Zoner, you will typically, especially if you're a good Fireball Zoner, like the Guile, the Sagats, to a lesser extent Ryu, you will typically force him to move, right? And the key here, like we said, is that all of Yurian's moves that make him cross the screen quickly are charge attacks. And because you are charge attacks and he is likely to lose the fireball wall, what's going to happen is situations like this. He is going to try to fireball and then do a knee, right? Or maybe he will try to do a fireball and then go for the tackle. This is what we usually see, right? But because he is losing the fireball wall, he will, and because these are charges, charge attacks, and he have to hide the charge, what's gonna happen is you will be able to beat him in the fireball wall and still have answers to these. So let's check this out. Something like this. We were able to throw Hadoukens to beat his fireball, but still able to anti-air his knee, right? So, from an approach like that, if your character has a strong... I mean, this is all about your character being able to outzone Yurian, right? If your character has a decent enough firewalls, you can do that. If your character... And the second approach is this. Let's have him do through the firewall. Okay, so this will depend on your spacing, obviously. And the EX tackle in particular is really quick. But if we are winning the fireball war from here, you will be able to knock him down with this. Typically speaking, it's all about if you're already winning the fireball war. It's kind of hard to show it or display it well, because I'm resetting and the spacing is not favorable. But the idea in general is, if your character can outzone Yurian with a fireball, this is one approach that we can use to our advantage. Of course, now I'm going to talk about the second weakness or the second hole in Yurian's game that you can exploit, and that is his anti-air game. And that's because he have a lo he have to rely on normals to anti-air. So typically speaking, if a character have to rely on normals to anti-air, that means that uh, they have a hard time versus characters who can change the jump bar or the jump timing. 
So if Kemi is jumping, say, if she's doing a regular jump, sure he can get that. This will lead to amazing damage, you know, whatever, right? So this will be easy to him to anti air, he will get good damage, everything is fine and dandy. But if Kemi is doing this, he can't possibly anti air this and anti air the other one. Like now he have to guess which timing she's doing. And if she is doing, so she changing her jump arc so that she's coming down really quickly. If she did the opposite and now she's delaying a lot, what will happen is this, he will get hit either way. So the point is, he he kind of will have difficulty versus characters who can change their jump arc. So the three things that you have to note about Yurian is, if you have a fireball character who can zone him, that will give you an opening. Maybe you'll be able to zone him. His approach options are all charge based, and that means that they are predictable. Like because be before he can dash at you or do like the ex shoulder or the uh, knee drop you will have a visual cue or he will be hiding the animation behind something else like doing the fireball and then doing the knee drop so you have a tell about when it's coming and the third one is because of he have because of his reliance on normals for anti-airs he will struggle versus character who are able to change his jump mark and now we are going to talk about when to interrupt when Yurian is pressuring you because he does have some fake stuff that a lot of Yurian players will abuse honestly. So I will show you some sequences and show you what you can do and when you're supposed to interrupt. So one of the most common sequences I would say is something like this. You'll see the Yurian do that, you'll try to interrupt maybe or take your turn with your poke because he's out of range and he hits you with the knee. So there are multiple things to note here. The first is because most of what he's doing is from crouching, the knee is kinda likely here. So you will need to have your anti air ready. For something like that, you will need to have your anti air ready, right? Because he's already crouching. But another really important thing that you must know is that his crouching medium is neutral on block. It is neutral on block. And Yurian does not have a three frame. So this means that every single character in the game can interrupt at some point. So let's repeat the sequence again. See here, my 3 frame is beating his light punch every single time. After the crouching medium punch, when he's trying to do his jab, he just can't get it to beat my crouching light kick. Now if I don't have a 3 frame and I have a 4 frame, we get a trade. So even if I went for my 4 framer, we are getting a trade. So this means that no matter who your character is, you can interrupt at this situation. So this is a common sequence. So first of all, if he's crouching, be prepared for the knee drop. And second, if he's doing the crouching medium bunch, know that it is neutral, so always challenge there. So let's see another sequence. Another common sequence is using the forward medium bunch. So they will do, a lot of times, they will do stuff like that, right? This attack is minus two on block. Forward medium is minus two. So when they are doing it, interrupt. Even with your four frame, I'm getting a counter hit combo on him. Now this can be set up meaty to be plus one. But even if it's plus one, you match your three frame, honestly. If you block this, always try to match your three frame. If he cancels it into the fireball, it's a true block string. Your fireball is not gonna come out. Your three frame will not come out anyway. So after the forward medium bunch interrupt, after the crouching medium bunch interrupt, and this is a third one, his crouching medium kick. This is minus two. So even if you don't have a three frame, a four frame interruption will still do the job. He will try to do something like that. Like we said, if he's still crouching, this is an easy anti-air. And better yet, just interrupt. It's again another common sequence that many Urian players will do, honestly. You'll see stuff like that a lot and not many will interrupt sadly so let's look at one final thing and this is also um, something that i see a lot actually uh, many times when yurian knocks down people he will go for the charged heavy kick and people will block mostly when i see him doing the charge roundhouse i wake up bottoms because this is like uh 
this is like Tim's over it. This is very hard for him to hit your meteors. So as soon as you see him doing it, I personally I never respect this one in Wacom. There are setups where he can get it to hit your meaty, but he can do it while covering all knockdowns. So he is taking a big risk and most likely it's going to be fake. So against the overhead, charged overhead, I would recommend waking up with buttons. So now I wanted to talk about some of these scramble situations that happen when you're fighting Urien and how to prepare yourself and how to defend against it, right? So I will show you a couple of examples and you tell me if that has ever happened to you. Let's have Urien here going for a tackle. You try to throw and then he does a headbutt. Like how often did that happen? I'm sure it happened to all of us. Now there are things to consider here. First of all, that shoulder is zero on hit. Zero on hit means that Adurian doesn't have his three frame, remember. So if your character has his three frame, you actually have the advantage here. So it, it, when this happens, even on hit, you will actually beat out whatever he does. As you can see, I'm mashing my three frame with Vega, and I will be able to beat out his head, but every single time. If he tries to throw me, I will still be able to counter hit him. No matter what he does, I have the advantage. Even if you have a 4 frame or even if you do a 4 frame, you will be able to beat his headbutt and if he does his uh, if he does his jab, you will trade. So if you ever get hit by a shoulder tackle, it's neutral. So just take your turn. Another issue is something like this. The headbutt. The headbutt from a range like that. If he's now the headbutt can be spaced to be more plus than plus 1. But if he is doing it from a throw bait range, he's gonna be plus one. So if you try to throw, because he have a four frame, he will counter hit you. So what can you do? Well, if you have a three frame, again, honestly, challenge. If you timed it right or if he timed it wrong, you will actually be able to hit him out of it, or at least trade. So a challenge after a hit button hit is a good thing. And let's have him go for a throw. With we'll head buttons and throw, right? So again, because this is only plus one, you're actually able to challenge here and get the advantage. So if he ever does a light kick shoulder, he's neutral. Head butts from throw range, they're only plus one. So you can challenge there. Another thing is if he does a medium kick shoulder. So let's have him do a combo like that, right? When he does a medium kick shoulder, believe it or not. Vega is plus 3 on hit. This means that Vega doing this, or Vega doing like a light kick, this is actually a punish. Like, believe it or not, this is actually a punish. So, if Urien does any, if Urien does any uh, shoulder that's not that heavy, and he does it on hit, I would recommend actually challenging. And if he does a headbutt from the throw bit range, also challenge after it even if you got hit he's not that plus you don't have to respect him that much so now i'm going to talk about something uh, that is pretty important versus urian i have featured it in a previous video but it is an important tip and it won't be a urian video if i didn't include it and that is how to meet him while also still being able to block the ex headbutt because it's a slow reversal you can meet urian typically with lights and still be able to block. So we here have Urien wake up with either jab or the EX headbutt and I will show you an example of me being able to meet him while still be able to blocking the headbutt in time. So here's what we're doing. He did the headbutt, I blocked. I'm doing the light and as I'm doing it I'm holding down back. If he did the headbutt it comes out and because of the invincibility my jab will whiff but I'll still be able to block. So, oh yeah, you missed up the dash. Blocking time. Now I got that. When you're fighting versus Urien, this thing is pretty important. I will leave some of the examples after this. So you will have to go with the, into the training room with your character and find out which works for you. But since we are doing a Urien video, this is important to know. So lastly, what is most likely the most important part of the battle versus Urien, and that is the Aegis, and how to survive the Aegis Reflector. 
because Aegis is one of the best speed triggers in the game. It's what makes this already strong character probably top 5 because it gives him a very strong comeback factor. So I will show you a couple of the more common activations that I have seen. Of course it can be used to punish many things but the key to avoiding the Aegis is to not get hit. So let me show you a couple of the more famous activation and the first activation is a dangerous one. There is a lot of counterplay to the second activation but the first one is what's really really risky. So first let's start with this one. Um, I'm sorry not that one. Okay so this is something that you will see a lot. Urian Blair will do two crouching lights to the crouching medium kick. What I would like to do here it's honestly just V reversal this straight away. Because after the crouching medium kick, he's too far away. If you if you if you stand and block this, he might actually be able to walk up and throw you. Which is a little bit dangerous. But he will not be able to do that if you have already V reversal. So if you V reversal this, he will not be able to wake up walk up and throw you. So I like to do this versus this activation. Maybe you can try to um, jump but i don't recommend it the second activation and the one that's also pretty dangerous is off of the target combo this is deadly because if you try to v reversal here you're getting thrown uh and then maybe you know you will eat a ton of damage so what i would like to do here is as soon as i see that the, the, the medium the first part of the head i just v reversal and v reversing here allows me to get away from the bullshit because he's so plus after this activation, you cannot V reversal, you cannot jump, you cannot try to back dash. Mostly anything he will does will hit you grounded. So I don't like to take this one. If he go for the target combo, I honestly I just V reversal the first hit. Block this and V reversal. Don't even let him get to the ages. If you let him get to the ages and try to V reversal the activation, you're getting strong. You're just gonna get strong. So the third one, and of course it's one of the more popular ones, I believe this is it. Oh, no, it's not that one. Uh, uh. It's the AX tackle, mainly. Again, this is the same case as the crouching medium kick. If he does it from a little bit far away, or the, if there is some separation, I will like to be reversal here. At least to give yourself some spacing. When you be reversal, you basically reduce his plus frames from plus like 9, 10, really, really large number to be plus 2 or something. At plus 2 he can straight to walk up throw. Which is the main issue here. At least you made the situation a lot harder for him. So maybe V reversal, even if the V reversal gets blocked. Now you can just like maybe jump away or do whatever the hell you want, right? Another major activation points and these are risky are on wake up. He might wake up Aegis, or he might wake up EX Headbutt, and then activate the Aegis from that. So what I would like to do here is just meet him like we said in the last part. Even if you get hit by the wake up Aegis, even if I get hit by the wake up Aegis, it's not a big deal. I have wasted his first activation, and I've survived the first one. You will, like As you see, Boyzen is not taking any real damage. And me surviving the first activation is so valuable. Like this is beyond valuable. Because as you will see later, the second one is a lot more deadly. The second activation can most honestly, you can really play around it. And I will show you some of the more popular options that he can do. And how you can still deal with them. If he is doing this, if he's trying to do... If he's trying to do the EX shoulder and then activate the second mirror... This is still unsafe. Uh, if, if we see here, this is minus 11. So minus, at minus 11, with poison, you can do something like Subo. And this will beat him. You generally want something that's forward moving. So fo Subo will work. Something like Sweep will work. That kind of stuff will work versus this. You may even do something like a Heavy Kick. Yeah, you might be able to do something like that. Basically, do anything that will move your character forward. Or something that had really fast startup. So you either go for fast startup or something that will move you forward. This also goes for the crouching medium kick activation, the second one. Oh, this was really poorly spaced. 
S same deal. You can try to do super. Super will work. Super will work, and also something like a crouching heavy will work. So if you survive the first activation, you kinda won't have the battle. The for surviving the first activation and knowing how to avoid it, I just showed you the most common activations. Of course, you can use it to punish many things. So you have to be careful. Don't try to neutral jump. Doing something like poison weights might be dangerous because he can punish it with the ages. Generally speaking, just try to be very careful when you have ages and try to survive the first hit. If you get out of the first activation on skis, you have most likely won the round. So if you enjoy this breakdown, please leave a like, subscribe or share. Thank you all for watching and stay safe.